Welcome everyone to the very first DIY build guide presented by Basehead Club. We're going to be building the Garage 1217 Project Sunrise 3. It's an absolutely incredible headphone and pre-amplifier. It's a tube hybrid, and extremely versatile, it can work with many different headphones, and uh, it's one of my favorite amplifiers below $1,000. So you can either have Jeremy Helms of Garage 1217 build this for you, and he's an absolute master at this. So I, if, I recommend doing that if you don't know what you're doing, but this is also a really fun project, and I had uh, really enjoyed doing this, and it's extremely satisfying to build something and then get to listen to it afterwards. So you can see both the CNC chassis as well as the acrylic chassis. Uh, that's the Project Horizon with the Sunrise, their sisters, uh, the Horizons for higher ohm headphones. Uh, we can see here that this DIY kit that comes from Garage 1217 actually comes with everything in individual baggies. You can see little labels on each of those like C2 and C8. Those correlate with the PCB markings as well as information in the manual. So you're not going to get lost. It's a, a stellar manual, um, just an excellent kit. All right, let's get started. There's an assembly guide uh, as part of the manual that you can get from garage1217.com. It's excellent. Absolutely, you will need it during the build. Here we can see some of what I use during the build. Isopropyl alcohol to clean things up. I stay grounded at all times. I have the flush cuts, a little bit of flux for one of the components, and kept my eyes protected at all times. Now I use a Hakko. I believe it's called the 888D. It's ubiquitous among the DIY community. But I started off with this Blackjack solder works, and it's actually quite good. I just replaced it after I soldered tons and tons. I use the Kester solder that's recommended by Garage 1217. It's great stuff. Highly recommend it. And here's the beautiful PCB that you need to clean off before soldering uh, just to get rid of some of the manufacturing residues. So I use just isopropyl alcohol here and uh, enjoy. <laughs> We got the PCB clean, it's time to take care of the heat sinks. We just kind of pre-build these before soldering them in and before really soldering anything. Instructions are right there in the manual, just make sure you put them in the right order. Here's all the pieces. As you can see, they're individually labeled. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you what I did in order to get the screw through. Um, now, when I did it initially, and including when I was recording here, I was kind of foolish and put all the pieces in before I put the screw in. You can just go ahead and put the screw through the heat sink by itself and it's a lot easier. Um, but this is, you know, pretty quick and painless after you figure it out. Uh, as you can see there, I said it's easier to leave off first. So just leave it off, get those things screwed down. Don't tighten them up uh, because you're going to be soldering them into the PCB toward the end of the build and then you want to tighten them up after you're done. Here's what they look like pre-assembled before we put them on the board. Now that we have our prep work done, it's time to actually get soldering. We're going to start from the smallest components and work up to the largest. And uh, I'm going to have things fast forwarded up a little bit so you can see some of what I did. Enjoy.
right, we're moving on to one of the only tricky-ish parts of the build. It's a one small SMD part. I use some flux here just to make things a little easier. You don't really need it. Um, but this is a small SMD RGB. What I do here, you're going to see, is I just tack one corner down of the LED. And to do that, I just put a little solder on that one pad. There you go. That's all you're going to need. You don't need much at all. And then you take the small part, I use some tweezers in order to uh, hold it in place. Heat that one little bit of solder up, melt it down, get it in there, and then I solder each of the other component corners, go over the first point one more time, and then uh, later on here you see me just kind of press it down just to make it nice and flush with the board. Not super important, but I like making things nice and straight. We got the hardest piece done, and now we're just going to move on to the diodes. These are actually polar, so you want to make sure that they are oriented correctly. It's pretty simple uh, to orient them correctly. On the PCB itself, you can actually see a little stripe, and there are stripes on the diodes as well. So just make sure those line up. Do them correctly. Take your time.
Now we have most of the diodes done. We're going to go with the LED diodes. You can see the short lead slash flat side is going to go on the flat side that you can see on the PCB. Pretty straightforward, um, but it's it can be kind of intimidating the first time you do it. It's really not so bad. Just make sure that the short sides or the flat side uh, matches up with the flat side of the little etching you can see on the PCB. You'll be perfectly fine. Um, and soldering them in is actually no trouble whatsoever. Alright, we got all of the resistors and diodes uh, in, and all the small capacitors and some of the other small components are done, and we're going to move on up to the mid-sized components. These are things like jacks, uh, slightly larger capacitors, and uh, trimmers, and things of that nature. And here it is done. Really, these are uh, pretty easy parts to solder in. Just got to make sure they're all nice and snug. Here we're going to ground the volume potentiometer. This just prevents any kind of noise pickup and static and such. So what I use here uh, is just one of the legs of a resistor or capacitor. It doesn't really matter. Um, and I just kind of loop it up around the volume pot as instructed in the assembly guide. And I use a little bit of solder right on the top just to make sure it stays in place. Um, before I uh, flipped up the board and actually soldered it correctly to the bottom of the board. Uh, here you just put on the washer and the nut, tighten it on down, make sure there's contact, and you're not going to run into any issues. Not a problem at all. Alright, now finally we get on to the large size components, including those heat sinks we pre-assembled earlier. And it's supposed to look like this when it's done. How'd we do? Great! Oh no. The U1 was gone, but no problem. I talked to Jeremy, he sent me one immediately, and I got it all assembled. It seems a little dull on that first shot. Um, I use some of the wrong kind of flux, RA flux, and then I end up cleaning it up with Arctic Clean, which I use for uh, computer processors. And it shined up real pretty. It's on the final assembly, which just takes a couple of minutes, no problem at all. And here it is complete. You see, it's just a beautiful amplifier, lovely to look at, and here it is working. I have that little SMD RGB set to uh, orange to look like tubes, and the more astute of you might notice a little black box in the background there. Now what is that? Well, that's an atomic bob noise nuke. That takes the SMPS power and cleans it up substantially. It's a really simple DIY project. In fact, if you've never done anything before, this is one of the best first projects you can do. It's just an LC filter that cleans up your power supply and takes this amplifier to the next level. Now you can see some objective measurements where you can actually objectively see that it's improving things. Go to uh, Super Best Audio Friends and search for the noise nuke and you'll find it. Now if you want to go to the next level again, you can get a linear power supply. These are going to be much more expensive and or much harder to find. I happen to have a few and uh, I love them, but they are, man, just absolutely bulky and not really any better audibly than the noise nuke is itself. All right, everybody, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, it's been a real pleasure to build this amplifier and even more of a pleasure to listen to it after it was complete.